Hello, hello, and welcome to Regiments of Renown, Lizardman Edition. So, as per usual with these videos, we're going to take a look at all the Regiments of Renown in the Lizard roster, talk about what benefits they have over the basic variant, and talk about when I would include them in my armies. Um, as per usual, this is geared mostly towards domination mode, but it could help you out in land battles or campaign as well. Now, you best get comfortable, because there are a lot of Lizardman ROWs. So, starting us off, we got the Cohort of Sotek, the Red Crested Skink ROR. Compared to the basics, they have Unbreakable, as well as this, this ability right here, Refuse to Die. For 20 seconds, entities cannot die while it's active, so units, the models just can, they can take damage, but they will not die outright. They'll stay alive with one hit point and keep fighting for the duration of the ability. Combined with Unbreakable, it can make them a very, very sticky infantry unit. My thing with them is, well, there's a couple of things. First of all, I forget to use this ability, which is a common thread you'll find with Lizardman ROWs, is they're Abilities require a lot of um, micro and paying attention to when when exactly you want to use it. So it can be hard to maximize the value out of the abilities on their ROR's. So they kind of lose a bit of value there. Second, I find Unbreakable to be as much of a hindrance as a help in Domination because resummoning mechanic is is a mechanic. You often want your units to die off and route so that you can get them back in your summoning pool and resummon them. When they're unbreakable, they tend to just linger on with, you know, five or ten models, and they fight, and they don't accomplish a whole lot. So you'd very often rather just have them back in your summoning pool, so that you can resummon them and get them back on the battlefield. Um, there's also the bug where if they're in your reinforcements, they won't get their frenzy, so they have to be in your starting army, which takes them down a peg as well. So these guys, I don't know. If you need an AP unit, sure, but they cost 825, and Saurus for 8... 800 have pretty much the same AP values, so I find these guys are usually skipped out on, which is kind of a shame, they're, they're a good unit on paper, but I just find they don't really fit into my armies. Next, the Legion of Chakwa, the ROR Source Spears. So, these guys have this neat ability right here, the Shield of Chakwa. All around them, they get 40% missile resist to anything near them. This is really, really useful for any kind of big dinos that are being focus fired very heavily. Think things like, you know, Dread Story and the Shredder. It can actually be a lifesaver. Especially if you combine it with something like the Shield of Gold ones from your Slon. It can give a massive amount of damage resist in a short time. But it doesn't have a ton of uptime. You know, it's only active for, what, 25 seconds and then it's down for 90 seconds. So you gotta make sure you're maximizing the value, which means you really want to use the Enzyme Burst Fire, which. There isn't a lot of in this game. Most damage in the game tends to be consistent over time, so... Well, it is a useful ability. The amount of downtime on it kind of lowers the value a little bit, so... If you're going for a big dino blob, it can be very, very effective, but if you're not, then there's not a whole lot of reason to take them. The Star Chamber Guardians, the ROR Temple Guard. So these guys have Guardian. That's their whole big thing. Guardian and Magical Attacks, which Magical Attacks are actually pretty rare on the Lizardman roster, so the Magic Attacks are quite nice. And then Guardian, again, kind of like the last one, it's really nice for character blobs. If you have a blob of, you know, big dinos, black to buy something like big old Krokgar right here on his dino, it'll actually give him a lot more survivability in the right situation. But those kind of blobs aren't as prevalent in domination mode as they used to be, you know, in Warhammer 2 and land battles, because, you know, the nature of domination mode, you have to contest multiple points, those blobs don't really have the same punching power that they used to. So you don't really see these guys a whole lot anymore, and that kind of goes for regular Temple Guard as well. Um, they're a little more common, but these guys have been on the sideline for most of Domination, which is a shame. The Cohort of Huatl? I'm going to be mispronouncing these a lot, and I am not sorry. So, the ROR Sacred Paroxyclor. So, the two things they bring to the table are, first of all, Armor Sundering. Second of all, they have Physical Resist instead of Missile Resist. So they're, st they're still just as vulnerable to missiles, but they're a little more durable in melee than the basic Sacred Croxigor. So, durability is always nice. The Armor Sunder is actually pretty nice for Lizardmen, because you don't have a ton of AP infantry clearing. Your dinos do alright, if you, but they can only be in one spot, and that's only if you bring really big dinos, and if you're shot, then it's hard to bring those big dinos. And then your infantry don't have a ton of AP values. Saurus and Redcrests both have about 18 or 19 armor piece of weapon strength, which isn't the greatest. So having these guys to really augment your front line's AP capabilities isn't bad. Sacred Crocs have been kind of a janky unit since they launched. They haven't been that good for the price, but 
the effect is nice, so if you want to bring Sacred Croc, Sacred Crocs for it, these guys aren't actually that bad. So that's enough for infantry and monsters infantry. On to cavalry and whatever you want to call these. First, we have the Pak Ho Pak Cohort, the ROR Cold One Spear Riders. They are bringing Vanguard deployment as well as immune to psychology. Immune to psychology. Um, and then, of course, all ROs have the rank nine stats. So these guys I'm a little conflicted on. Immune to psychology is nice. Um, and Vanguard is okay. The thing is, they're just so expensive. They cost 300 more than the basic variants. They're 1300. ITP is nice. If you gotta kill a big single entity, sure. They're, they're good at surrounding those you know, big armored single entities and beating them down, but I feel like they just have better tools for that job as lizards. You have so much shooting to shoot them with. You have your own dinos to duel them with. I just don't feel like they fill a niche for the lizardmen. They're a fine unit in a vacuum, I just don't feel like they're necessary. Next, we have the Amexon Barbs, the ROR Razor Dawn. So these bad boys are packing poison and missile resist, I believe. These guys... I don't know. I'm not huge on Razor Dawns in general. And on a roster with so much poison, the poison isn't that valuable. You have so many things on the Lizardmen that deal poison. All of your javs, all of your pterodons, most of your dinos have jav throws on the side, so you're not really lacking for poison. And you're not really looking to get in shootouts with these guys. These guys really won't be sh just sitting shooting armored infantry or armored single entities. So having missile resist isn't that helpful. Their stats and their missile strength is actually pretty nice. But they're really overshadowed by the next guys on this list, which is the Umbral Tide. I find, despite these guys' AP values, these guys just massively outperform the damage output, so... And they also bring much more useful effects to the field. Namely, perfect vigor and stock. Being able to be completely invisible effectively gives them much more missile resist, because they aren't going to get shot until they reveal themselves to actually start shooting themselves. Which means that it gives you that ability to actually pick your fights a lot more, and you can get into positions where you won't be getting shot, which is usually the ideal. Perfect Vigor as well is just a very, very nice trait. Keeps you at full fighting capacity for the entirety of the time you're on the field, which, if you're lucky these, with these guys, it'll be quite a long time, as they have a lot of ammo to spend. So you want to keep them safe for quite a long time, and they are pretty slippery, so the stock, they're actually able to slip back in the stock quite op often. So it's a really nice ability for this type of unit, so if you're against anything with a lot of shooting, or that's going to help you hunting your, uh, your salamanders pretty hard, this is definitely a nice upgrade over the basic variant. Next, we have the Pajo Sentinels, the ROR Pterodons. These guys are a beast. So they bring the special rock drop. The, this is much better than the basic variant. It has Sundered Armor. It hits like a truck. It'll delete most infantry units if you get a nice square drop. They are exceptional. If you have control of the skies and you need to kill armored infantry or kill missile units, they are your one-stop shop. They are amazing. They cycle really well, so you can just go out, throw a rock drop, and then if you want to, you can just de them right away and get another rock drop another a minute later. Like, it's it's a very effective way of just going out and deleting units and clearing units very, very quickly, which is one can struggle to do, so it's a very nice unit. Especially for backline disruption, like I said, getting on top of those missing units, destroying them, then landing on them. You know, the typical Pterodon play pattern, but a lot more damage right up front. And now the Colossodon Hunters, the ROR Ripper Dactyls. These guys have two abilities compared to the basic one. They have anti-large bonus, which is 15, which is pretty substantial, as well as toad rage. Plus 50% weapon strength, both, both AP and basic, and rampage for 18 seconds. These guys hit hard against large targets. They're very, very good for controlling the skies or going and sniping big single entities. Um, the combination of the bonus versus large plus the toad rage brings their weapon strength up crazy high. Almost 200 weapon strength on, what, 10 models that have good animations and can surround really well. So they're actually incredible at tearing apart big single entities, armored calf, anything like that. They're really, really good for. But they are really squishy, so you gotta be careful with them. If you can get them in the right situation, they'll pay for themselves twice over easily. But you need to be very careful with them not to get them damaged. But they're, yeah, if you need to kill big single entities, specifically in the air, they're very, very strong for that. So, things like Bellacor, Malekith. Alright, on to our own single entity. So, we got the Pale Death, the ROR Feral Troglodon. This one's a bit of a weird one. Its ability right here, Primeval Roar, is plus one for melee attack, 35 meter range, 31 seconds, and you recharge it by being engaged in melee. It's infinite uses. Typically, these kinds of melee attack buffs are really, really nice for Lizardmen, specifically for Saurus. 
Because Swords have pretty low melee stats, but pretty high weapon strength, so they're just an ideal target for these kind of buffs. But the thing is, this isn't a primarily melee monster. This is a hybrid monster. It has a lot of weapon missile strength, and you really won't be spending its ammo. It doesn't want to be spending all its time in melee. So it's going to take forever to charge up that buff being in melee, not spending its ammo. So it, it's just kind of a weird ability for it to have. It's, it's a good ability in a vacuum, but just not on the unit you would want it to be on. This guy wants to be running around shooting things, not necessarily in melee. So it's kind of like, well, do I go into melee to farm the ability that I paid for this guy for, or do I, you know, sit back and shoot and use the ammo that I paid for this guy for? So it, it just takes too long to do both things. So I find he doesn't really pay for himself that often. You're better off with just basic struggle on him most of the time, I feel. Or a skate priest on one. So, Guilt Bloom's Terror? Again, I'm not pronouncing things correctly. So, the Feral Carnosaur ROR. This thing has Vanguard and Strider, and costs three or four hundred more than the basic variant. Again, rank nine stats, so it's a better duelist, but <sighs> Vanguard and Strider, 400 gold. If you're looking to have a single entity fight in a forest, sure. Otherwise, just take the basic one. This guy doesn't really provide a whole lot. Just take the basic one and share on it. It's probably cheaper. So, yeah, I'm not a big fan of this guy. The Spirit of Teapok, the Arwar Kawadal. I believe the only difference between this one and the basic one is the spell kit. Compared to the base one, the base one has Erdon's Thunderbolt and Chain Lightning. This one has Banishment and Shield of Thorns. So I talked about this a little bit in my Lore of Life video. Melee damage reflection is really underwhelming. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage, really. Um, and then Banishment. Banishment's an okay spell. Not great. But I feel like overall this is just a downgrade of spells. Erdon's Thunderbolt is a really nice spell. Chain Lightning is about on par with Lesser Banishment. But Thunderbolt's really nice, and Shield of Thorns really isn't, so... If, again, if you're at Mary Quaddle, I feel like the basic one's just better. Again, rank 9 stats are nice, but the spell kit just... It just feels so much worse. Alright, on to the last two. We got the Thunderous one. The Ancient Stegadon ROR. This one's unique ability is this right here, the Judgment of... Oops, Mac. Not gonna try to fix that. So, it's a bombardment that just triggers it when they're in melee for so long. And it's actually not bad for clearing out armor infantry, which is something Lizardmen kind of struggle with. Again, like I was saying earlier, not a lot of AP on their infantry, so having this guy come in and really clear up a lot of, you know, Chaos Warriors or Dwarf Warriors, that kind of thing, he's not bad. He's a little pricey for that job, so it's only when you're really desperate. But if you really need armored infantry gone, he's a solid choice. The Shredder. This bad boy needs no introduction, I'm sure. Compared to the regular Dread Saurian, he has Dread Aversion as well as Encourage. So, we'll get to Dread Aversion in a second, but Encourage is an ability I know I've, I've shit talked a lot in a lot of these videos. But that's usually because of what unit it's on. For this guy, it's actually really useful. Because if you're bringing this guy, he costs 3,700. He's going to be the centerpiece of your build. You're going to plan to fight around him, which means he'll get maximum effect out of that Encourage. Like, everything in your army wants to be near him anyway, so just having that extra leadership near him is really, really useful. It's a lot better than, you know, I think the Ever Everqueen's Court Guard, the uh, Sister of Avalon ROR has it, where it's a backline unit that doesn't really want Encourage, or the things near it don't want the extra leadership necessarily. With this guy, he's on the front lines, he's the center of your build, you want everything around him to be fighting to the bitter end, so it's perfect. It's the exact kind of unit you want it on. And then Dread Aversion is basically the inverse. It's just minus leadership for enemies nearby. Again, same thing. He wants to be right in the thick of it, so it's perfect. Especially when you mind the fear and terror from the big old dino that's been trying to murder everybody. Really, really solid leadership nuking combo. Really, really good at shearing and fearing enemy units very, very quickly. It's really expensive. If you're bringing it, it's the core of your build, so choose wisely. But if that's what you're going for, he's very, very good at that job. And again, rank 9 stats, which are actually pretty good for this bad boy. So yeah. Solid choice if you need that big old centerpiece lizard. Anyway, that is all of the many Lizardman ROR's. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.